Best T and MVP in overall series. Tied one and one, the final match of the final best of three. Each player has defeated the other three times in the course of this BlizzCon tournament today. And everything comes down to one final match for $50,000. It all comes down to Shakur's Plateau, which will be our last map between these two players, Sean. $50,000 on the line. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready to make some noise? The grand final of BlizzCon 2011 could not have had a better story. Everything comes down to one single game. If MVP wins, then he is the champion. If Nesty wins, then he is the champ. Let's hop in to the final match of the BlizzCon Invitational. Now, I, I want the crowd to be as quiet as possible. I'm actually gonna pull my headphones away. All right, good, you're being very quiet. In the top left corner, he was dominated in the winner's bracket final. But he came back in the first best of three to tie it up 1-1 and has now pushed it to a final game three. If you would like him to win, give a cheer for the underdog in this series. I am MVP. <laughs> now over here, the player who was in the winner's bracket final defeating MVP Came up in this match, lost the first set. Can he actually pull it back here and defeat his friend? It is I am Nesty. Though almost everybody would go for that early expand MVP, no, even on Shakura's plateau. He wants to favor that double Hellion opening. Nesty going for the early expand like clockwork will be getting that pool, that gas, that hatch up at the exact same time as he has optimized that opening as best he can. Now, Sean, I really want to get inside the head of these two players. You've been in this situation before in these boots in the grand final. What is going through your head right now? In Nesty's position, I'm going to be feeling really nervous. After that first game, I'm thinking to myself, ha, if I push it to a long game, I'm gonna be in great shape. But then after that second game, I'm realizing, oh my gosh, my teammate could come attack me at any point in time, and he could even expand anywhere on the map at any point in time. MVP has the full gamut of possibilities in his mid game. If I'm Nesty, I am praying I can get this match past 12 minutes. Now, what about MVP's point of view, Sean? If I'm in MVP's spot, I think that I am starting to realize that I have a lot more momentum than I initially did. MVP went into this series after a really disheartening loss in the GSL Finals, another disheartening loss in the Winner's Bracket Finals, and he has pushed it all the way back to this final set. I think MVP can really dig deep and think to himself, I am capable of beating MVP in yet another best of three. And here we go, Sean. The action is already heating up. We do see a bunker at the natural from MVP. Putting some pressure here onto Nesty. Oh, looks like Nesty is getting caught a little bit off guard by this. This is the classic move that MVP is known for. This kind of bunker aggression. He wants to force more Zerglings. Try to delay that spine crawler. He's just going to fall back, Sean. He will be opening up with the reactor Kellyan here. We do see the reactor and, of course, that factory. But look how many drones he actually just forced for Nest. He has a total of six out on the map right now. That is three possible drones that are no longer there. An MVP brilliantly building up to four Marines. That means with proper control, he will be able to pick off all of these Zerglings. And that's exactly what he's going to do. Picking off the first front lines. Great play by MVP. And now MVP is going to force yet more links to be constructed for Nest. And a little bit of desperation once Spinecrawler is planted. And we see that that Hellion, double Hellion play is coming up right now. See a total, wow, all the way up to 10 links for these four Marines. That is uh, 14 Whoa. links. Is that an overreaction, Sean? I almost feel like Nest, he kind of has to do that. He doesn't really have that much of an idea of what his opponent's doing. He's only just found this gas geyser. He has no information in the slightest, and when these Hellions pop out, they're going to be able to do some massive damage to these Zerglings. Nesty's hoping to run along this south flank and catch everything off guard, and that would be his hope of getting that lead back early. 
Command Center 4 MVP almost finished. He will be taking his expansion pretty soon. We see that uh, Rax finishing the tech lab. We also have a couple of Hellions popping on here. Some Lings, though. Uh oh, uh oh. Four Nest T are being very sneaky here, Sean. We see Ling Speed finished. And oh is he going to no. move in? It looks like he's moving in, but with the mistiming, the Hellions just now getting to the front of the ramp. They will be able to clean up all the Marines, but we see those two supply depots lifted immediately. And Nest T is guaranteed to lose all these Zerglings now. Really got to try to get a surround, but I'm not sure if MVP is going to allow oh. it. Here comes the two more Hellions. A lot of the Lings dying there. And that attack has been foiled from Nesty. And look at this. The triple command center play from MVP. He is going for the long-term macro game. Again, impossible to predict anything out of MVP's play, doing a huge variety of styles. And that is a very, very quick lair coming out of Nesty right wow. now. Still yeah. on two base. He has not that much gas stockpile, but we do see... Uh, the second and third and fourth extractor finished there, so he'll be, of course, moving the drones over. But this is looking kind of similar to the last game right now. He does have these four, excuse me, six Hellions right now outside the ramp, but it's going to be very hard for him to push in. MVP again, he's hardly even looking for an opportunity to attack. He is looking for an opportunity to slowly stockpile a lot of tanks, a lot of Marines at the front. He's just now getting stimmed. He'll be building a bunker. He'll be getting an engineering base shortly for those upgrades. And MVP is playing for the long-term gigantic mid-game push. And how will Nesty answer? Will he go for that usual Spire? It looks like he's gearing up to do so. We'll be waiting for that Spire to go down. The Bailey Nest about to finish. We still don't have that macro hatch. There it is actually going down right now at the natural. Now that I uh, talk about it, we see the plus one melee attack upgrade started. And MVP is trying to get in here to the natural. That one queen is very low. Oh, nine oh. HP. Does not lose it, but it is very, very low. And of course, because it's Nest T, that queen still had way more hit points than it had energy because Nest T literally never misses a larva inject, and this is quite an uncharacteristic move from Nest T. Getting an Overseer to just try to figure out what the heck MVP is doing, that is a real sign that Nest T is feeling quite rattled at this point in time. Spire about halfway complete for Nest T, but he's still trapped here on these two bases simply because there's six Hellions outside. You see a one Ling come out just to check to see if they're still there, and of course they do take it out very easily. This one command center is going to skyrocket the economy for MVP. If we actually come look at the worker count, Nesty has hardly been able to maintain much of a lead. He has 45 workers to 44. Almost always, you will have far more workers in the Zerg camp than in any of the opposing teams. But we do see the siege tanks getting all the upgrades. Stim just now finishing up. Combat shield will follow shortly. But must make certain he doesn't take too much damage from any Nautilus. Really wondering right now when Nest T is going to push out. He has five Nautilus in production. The plus one melee upgrade should be finishing here. The spine crawler going down on the low ground. And will it be able to? It looks like it will burrow, but it's going to be very low HP. Wow, it looks like MVP might just sit here and wail away on the spine crawler, but no, instead opting to take no damage. And now there's the time for MVP to have to deal with this runaround tactic by MVP. More barracks are going up, siege tanks are up, but there are no bunkers at the front. Ooh, MVP getting a little bit risky here. A single missile turret going up in the back in production. We see only one missile turret is incoming. And here come the Mutilus, and oh, MVP might be caught a little bit off guard. Good. If Nest T Good. moves in, he would be able to deny that turret. And here he goes. Will he get in time? No. Oh, it finishes. Nest T has to fall back. That is too little Mutus to really deal with that at that point in time. So he will use those to go clean up these Hellions outside of his base. Nesty is not down and out, but MVP is looking to slowly be in an increasingly dominating position. Now the Hellions are finally getting pushed back, but look at this great move by MVP, popping down here to the third base, but <laughs> Nesty's a little bit too good for that. Cleans that Hellion up with ease. And when will MVP push out? I, I can tell you when your average player would move out, but MVP is anything but that. Ordinarily, players would start moving forward. <laughs> He just, because he could, you know? Yeah, I mean, that, that's smart play, man. Use everything that you possibly can. Here come the Mutas. They are going to get in, but not going to be able to do much because the Missile Turret and those Marines, these plus one upgrades will chase them off. 
Now, Nesty actually really hasn't done too much with those mutas, uh -huh. and he really needs to start trying to do some more because if his opponent gets too far ahead right now economically, we see him actually taking the third and fourth. Even he's a little bit worried about it, Sean. And this is what makes Nesty such a difficult player in the weight room. Look at how early he's planting these geysers down so that way he can begin getting that gas income as quickly as he can. JP, this is the last match. Both players are at match points. Whoever wins this will be the champion and get $50,000. Whoever loses will get $25,000 second place prize and not a single more chance to do any better. And both players are playing very, very kind of passively right now, being very careful as we see Nessie has he found an entry point. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Looks like a couple of Mulos getting caught off guard. He loses one for free. And we see MVP, per usual, taking virtually no damage from any harassment. Another factory about to finish up. There's another stim from MVP. We see the two engineering bays busily upgrading away. And these four Hellions are trying to find any opportunity they can to step into the fray. Thor's in production. Marines pouring out of all these barracks. But MVP has just, wow, has actually stopped his SCV production. A little bit of a misstep. Wants to really get that high up so when he takes his third base, he can get it up and operational right away. Nesty also skyrocketing with drones. 85 drones, wow. 87. Making more drones. Will likely turn those to spine crawlers eventually. This is where I start getting a little bit nervous right now for MVP. He's still on two base. Nesty has taken the map. You see him slowly start to move out. Uh-oh. Big stem there on the low ground, but Nesty sends the mutas up to the high ground. Does take up that tank. There's the overseer trying to find anything he can to contaminate, but instead he splits into a bunch of icky gak and falls to the ground right where the orbital command's going to lay down. Now, where is MVP going to fall? Oh. We do see some Hellions uh -oh. here into oh. the third base. They and aren't blue flame, though, so they're going to have to connect a little bit more. And it looks like, oh, he's lined him up. Oh, he gets a big shot. If he can do one more. No. no he does not get it. Almost so. nothing killed there by MVP. Look at four Three. workers total. Yeah. What? That is, that's an ST, man. That's all you got to say, I guess. <laughs> MVP walling off the bottom with command centers. Wall. He'll probably be morphing these into orbital commands because, as we see again, he's fairly low on that SCV count and he will rapidly expand his supply up with just infantry, tanks, and Thors. This is slowly going to become a defensive nightmare for MVP, JP. I mean, how can yeah. you possibly cover this much space when there's mutilists and speed zerglings running around everywhere? Yeah, this is kind of reminding me of Idra's play. This is something that he does almost every TBZ that he plays in is this huge, huge focus on Mutalisk, and we see uh -huh. right now Nesty is about to pop into the natural. He will be able to take out those turrets pretty easily. And uh -oh. he's going to start on those SCVs. And it looks like no SCVs killed off there. There the first one is, and we're starting to see great volleys by Nesty. MVP looking to be in a lot of trouble coming up. Looks like we are seeing Nesty's next move as he does have the pathogen gland started. He's going to pop in here, take out that reactor. Smart play because it does take so long to build. We also see that hive started as well. So, do you think we're going to be seeing Broodlords? Do you think we're going to be seeing Ultralisk? I definitely think it will be the Brood Ward play. A hundred drones on the field right now for Nesty. And you know what the that best might thing to be do with drones much? is? He's just going to go ahead and build himself a lot of spine crawlers. Wow, actually, look at the mineral count right now for Nesty. 2,800 minerals. He is just having such a fun game right now. He can build whatever he wants, whenever he wants, Sean. Mules, who needs them, right? Let's just get 100 drones. It's yeah. no big deal. That's I'll just build some answer, spine crawlers here. I can put some spine crawlers down here. And yeah, let's go ahead and pepper those in the middle as well. See him still flying around with these mutas. Now about to pop into the fourth base. And uh -oh. yeah, there's not oh. too many Marines here. He might be able to deny this entire base if he really stays there. There's, there's the planetary the fortress. This suddenly, is, he is racing against the clock, desperately trying to get up. This planetary fortress, we see the Zerglings now swinging around to that bottom side. We see the Thor in a pretty good position. The Mutals now walking through the middle. Uh-oh, uh -oh. the Thor is vulnerable. And here comes the push from Nesty. He's trying to pick off everything that he can. This planetary fortress is nearing completion, and both players, I mean, come to the units lost tab. There's actually not that much that has been lost despite all these engagements from both players. But the one thing I'm really worried about is that if we come to the natural expansion, the Greater Spire is halfway done. Now, you might be wondering why those links were kind of thrown away in that last engagement. It, at this point in the game, links are basically free. I mean, when you have 4,000 minerals in the bank, he just took out so many of those supply depots there, but he's going to be chased off. You can make links basically whenever you want, Sean. Uh-huh. And I mean, with the amount of brood lords that Nesty no doubt wants to produce, 
He is freeing up the supply, getting ready to hop into action. Look at this, MVP constantly losing his reactor on that one star port, unable to get his Viking count too high. And I'm pretty sure I know what Nesty wants to do with these corruptors. I'm Greatest pretty sure. I think I'll figure out maybe two, one. Done. Okay, okay, we have one of these. Okay, let's see what he does. Well, let's go ahead and expand, but let's see what he does. Okay. There we go. There we go. There it is. I had a feeling, JP. Yeah, yeah. But now, if there's anything MVP can deal with, Sean, it's Broodlords, because he is one of the first players to really start with the ghost play. I mean, 